Well, I, I sure am happy that Judy Shelton is taking uh, is going to take my place on the uh, Federal Reserve. I've known Judy for 25 years. Uh, she is an outstanding monetary economist. Actually, probably more, uh, you know, have a, has a better background and knowledge of these things than I do, and I know a lot about it. Um, look, I, I want to shatter this uh, this uh, narrative that I've heard on uh, CNBC and other. Uh, you know, business reporters saying that somehow Judy is a is a dove. She is not a dove. She's an inflation hawk. We just believe, and I think Judy and I share this belief, the Fed has been way too tight for way too long. It's one of the reasons the economy, I think, is faltering a little bit. When you got a 2%, you know, 10-year Treasury bill, that's a sign that you don't have any inflation in the economy. Why else would people buy 10-year Treasuries at 2% interest rates? And so we do need the rate cuts now, not because, you know, we're doves, but because we think that, the, if anything, the, the fear right now should be of deflation in the economy, not inflation. What do you make of her previous support for going back to a gold standard? Well, look, I, I'm one who's always believed we should make the dollar as good as gold. You want the dollar anchored to something. I, I, I think, Judy, I can't speak for her, uh, but I have had discussions with her um, that one good way of measuring where the dollar is headed and where prices are headed is to look at standard commodity indexes. And that's where I see the deflation. And, the, you know, I was looking at the numbers uh, just today that, the, you know, commodities are down about 12 or 13 percent in price over the last year. Ladies and gentlemen, that's deflation, right, when you have falling uh, prices of, uh, of everything from soybeans to copper. And, and so I don't I would not characterize her as a as a dub. I would characterize her as someone who wants stable prices and also someone who does not believe this Phillips curve nonsense that somehow when you get more economic growth, that somehow that raises prices. Sarah, what's your take on uh, both nominees and their likelihoods of being approved? Yes, yeah, so I, I, I agree with Steve that we all serve at a particular point in history. Uh, both these potential nominees would be joining the Board of Governors um, at a time when the economy is lackluster, where business investment is low, where wages have been slow to produce prosperity, where independence is being questioned, where a lot of people feel, feel stuck. Uh, now, it is true that Judy does have um, some unorthodox views. Uh, I don't find those unorthodox views necessarily um, disqualifying. Uh, but she would be joining a system uh, that she has stated that she doesn't believe in. And so what, what does that involvement look like? Uh, will she push for disabling the Fed's tools for dealing with downturns? Uh, what does it mean, essentially, uh, to be a gold bug at this time? And I think when she comes before uh, the, the Senate Banking Committee, those will be the views uh, that she'll want to sort of lay the foundation for and, and, and show how they cohere. And uh, that will be, I think, um, a, a welcome discussion. As for Christopher Weller, um, he comes from a place where uh, the, the St. Louis Fed, which has produced some rich data sets on household well-being and on household debt. Those data sets come from the St. Louis Fed. And, and one of his challenges will be really how how that data um, uh, fits into the Fed's models and whether that um, uh, though, and whether Fed policy is delivering the expected results um, the optimal results to all households to all corners of the economy mm -hmm. and of course both nominees really will need to say something about uh, regulation as well. Governors are, um, are, are different from the, the uh, rest of the FOMC in the sense that they have to look at the safety and soundness mm -hmm. of the banking system. And so Steve, one Steve. question will be whether these nominees, what they, you know, what do they think of the regulatory settings? Are they appropriate for now? Steve, I do want to ask you about the president tweeting yeah. today uh, that China and Europe are manipulating their currencies and perhaps it's time for the United States to match them. Is that good monetary policy? Well, first of all, let me go back, because I just don't agree with a lot of the stuff, you know, that was just said. I mean, we've got a blockbuster economy right now. I understand the factory orders and manufacturing. Steve, you just been, started yes. your argument, your last answer, by saying the economy is weakening. It is weakening, but, you know, the, the main... Well, it's, it's, not two, well, it's not both. It's not both. Yeah, from, our, from very, very strong growth that we had in the fourth quarter, third, uh, third quarter of 2018, and the first quarter was, was very solid 
uh, this year. I think there are two factors that are holding back the economy right now. One is the Fed has been too tight, and that, in my opinion, has knocked about a half a percentage point off of growth. And the second factor has been the China trade war. And if we get this trade deal done with China, my God, the economy is going to explode with growth and equities are going to continue to go up. I mean, this is a very when you have when you have seven and a half million more jobs than people to fill them, you've got a pretty darn good uh, solid economy uh, for workers. And my point is that I think Judy is is going to be a very solid hand at the Fed. I don't I don't know Mr. Waller, so I can't speak for him. But she understands that what you want at the Fed is stable prices. This idea that somehow the Fed stabilizes the economy is nonsense. The Fed is the one that caused the, the big Great, Depri Great Recession in 2008 and 2009 by, by building up these, uh, these huge bubbles in the housing market. So the Fed hasn't been the mm -hmm. anecdote, anecdote to, antidote to uh, recessions. The Fed has been the cause of recessions. What, what, Steve, what takes you to the White House today? And, and to Contessa's uh, point, were you correcting the president that today Europe hasn't done any currency manipulation? They've simply made some new appointments in the same way that he has. Look, I don't think that, the, that we should worry about what these other countries are doing with their currency. I think we should worry about what we're doing with ours. The dollar has been very strong, excessively so, so, uh, so in my opinion. And I think that is hurting growth a bit. So if you got the rate cuts that, uh, that I want, I want to see a 50 percent rate reduction. I think you will see the dollar uh, normalize and it will it will. That's the best way to get back at the Chinese if indeed they are manipulating their currency. Sarah, I just have one quick uh, other question uh, going back to Judy Shelton and, and some of the comments mm -hmm. she's made about monetary policy yeah. uh, recently saying that she believes uh, the Fed should stop paying interest rates on excess yeah. reserves that the banks yep. hold. Yes. Uh, Sarah, what's your view on that? So I think that that's an interesting and provocative statement. I think it is something that is worth exploring. Um, I would not dismiss her arguments as being uh, frivolous at all, but she should explain them. And, and, and communication, of course, and the ability to communicate well is a, a strong feature of board governors. So it, it'll be good to hear how she explains what that problem is and what, you know, and, and, and different ways in which it can be addressed. And, and I think uh, that that is, is something that should be, should be explored. And, and, and senators can, can then determine whether or not her, her position has coherence and whether it's relevant right now. I think, by the way, I've talked to Judy Shelton about this issue. And, she, you know, again, she and I think alike that when the Fed started paying interest on reserves, it had a very negative effect on bank lending. And that's one of the reasons that the recovery from the Great Recession, you know, back in 2011 and 12 and 13 was so weak. And so I, I think she's, I don't know if I'd go to zero in interest on reserves. I don't know if that's what she was talking about. But certainly when the Fed cuts rates, it has to cut the interest on the reserves or the re reduction in the Fed funds rate will have no effect whatsoever.